Hi everyone, this is just a quick video taking you through how to write a speech. Specifically, this video is going to focus on helping to develop the skills that anyone needs for any level of functional skills or ESOL uh, English as well. Also, if you're thinking about doing uh, GCSE English and progressing on to do that, this is a really good thing for you to look at because it is a really important aspect that you will be looking at in the future. We're also going to have a look about this idea of doing a debate and how to understand how to pre present your ideas in an effective manner. So first of all then, we need to consider what is a speech and what do we need to include within our speech in order to make them effective. So first of all then, a speech is a form of writing that is intended to be read aloud. It is a formal address to an audience of people. Now if that still seems a little bit confusing, essentially what it means is that when people do carry out a speech, Normally that is done in front of a crowd of people or an audience. However, you wouldn't be expected to do that for this actual writing task. Obviously, if you're speaking and listening, you would. But right now we're just focusing on the writing component of your course. So even though we're not going to actually perform this or deliver it in front of an audience, you still need to pretend as though it is something that's going to be done. It also says that it's formal. OK, so you need to think carefully about what we mean by that. If you're not too sure, we have got another video on the channel that looks at formal and informal writing. If it's talking about formal address, then that means we need to be polite and we need to be sophisticated. And we need to think carefully about the kind of words we're using to have a professional tone. What makes a speech effective? So specifically then, in order to be effective within your speech, you need to have an ability to connect with your audience and deliver information that is either important, entertaining, or both. Now, if you ever want to actually see some really fantastic speeches, you can go and have a look at YouTube and just see any kind of speech competition or public speaking competition, and there'll be a lot to look at there. And a good thing to do with that is to actually look at the techniques and the methods they're using to connect with their audience, because again, that is very important when you're writing a speech. So no matter how advanced you are in your career, Public speaking skills tend to have room for improvement. Everybody uh, tends to have areas that they're not that great at. So it's really good to keep going back over it and seeing if you can develop it as well. So if you're in the spotlight, you need to be repaired and polished. So this not only is going to be really important to help us with our writing task, again, something that you might come up with for one of your assessments, but also in your wider life as well. Things like interviews, things like presentations within work, all of these things are going to help you to develop those skills as well. Look at the extracts and be ready to answer the quick fire questions. So in many of our videos within this channel, what we do is we think about actually developing the reading skills as well as the writing as well. Because it doesn't matter if you've passed this component already, it's still something you need to keep developing and improving. Because if you're going to go on to GCSE as well, it's going to get you into the swing of actually analysing an extract as well. Now, the text that we're going to look at is actually going about the same theme, the same topic that we're going to look at when we're writing our speech a little bit later on. So it's a really good thing to actually read through because it might help you when you come to write your response if you don't know that much about this actual theme. So it says then, Epic Games released the electronic game Fortnite in 2017 after years of development. The game allows players to find resources, build defences and attack enemies. Players can choose to play by themselves, in a team of two, or in a squad of up to four people. The game features violence with guns, including assault rifles and other weapons, though no blood is shown and the graphics are cartoon-like. Epic Games graded Fortnite appropriate for teenagers. However, the game attracted a larger, audi larger audience encompassing both younger and older players. It quickly rose in popularity and was a favourite with professional video game streamers. By early 2019, Fortnite had some 250 million players. Now, if you'd like to pause the video here and take your time and read through it by yourself, please feel free to do so. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at a few questions just to test your ability to skim and scan the information and how quickly can you absorb new pieces of information as well. Quick fire questions. Test your understanding against the questions below. Number one, look at text A. Again, that was the text that we just looked at in the previous part of the video. Identify three things 
you can do in the game. Number two, some people could say this game is aggressive. Select a quotation or a keyword to support this viewpoint. Number three, identify where the writer has used an ascendetic list. Now, if you're not too sure what we mean by that, it's a really fancy word. It's a really good term to know as well because it's a really important one for GCSE. An ascendetic list is just very simply a list that has been used with commas instead of using a colon. Number four, identify the discourse marker used to present a balanced argument. So again, discourse marker is going to be the D in De Forest. However, when we're going to use it later on, we're going to talk about it as a direct address. A discourse marker will be a word like however, on the other hand, conversely, or something like that. And number five, last one, identify where a statistic has been used to show the game's popularity. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump ahead and we're going to start looking through the answers. So if you need to spend a bit more time, please feel free to pause it now. Class feedback. Check your answers against the ones below. So for the first question then, we needed to think about three things that can be done in the game. So answers may include, but not limited to, find resources, build defences and attack enemies. So when we have that phrase that says answers may include, but not limited to, that's just a simple thing that we put at the start of it, which means that even if you haven't got these ideas specifically, then any that is kind of linked to it or quite similar to it would also count as a mark as well. Number two asked us, some people could say this game is aggressive. Now you need to select a quote or find a keyword that backs up that idea. So answers may include, but are not limited to words like attack. So if you think about the actual meaning of the word, the connotations behind it, attack has a lot of negative connotations there. Number three. So for this one, we had to identify where the writer has used an ascendetic list. And an example could include the game features violence with guns, including assault rifles and other weapons, though no blood is shown. Number four, a discourse marker that could be used is however. Now this is a really good word to use. If you don't naturally use it in your writing, then I'd highly advise you to do it, especially if you want to present a balanced argument. And finally, we had to think about the statistic that was being used. So by the early nine, uh, 2019, Fortnite had some 250 million players. So again, if you're not too sure what we mean by that, a statistic is just where we use numerical data in order to support an idea. Look at the exam question below and attempt the challenges that follow. So this is the question we're gonna focus on within this video. Games consoles and PCs are expensive and make teenagers lazy, aggressive, and less likely to pass exams. Write a speech for your school's parents' evening in which you discuss your point of view. Now, I'm aware that the vast majority of you that are doing functional skills won't actually be within a school setting. You may, in fact, be in a college setting, and that's absolutely fine. But you just need to think about the vast majority of students might be quite young. There might be some that are in school or in college. Or when you go on to do your GCSEs, a lot of the time the questions are aimed at teenagers as well. So that's a key thing to be aware of when you look at any question. So when you're faced with a question, you need to think about a couple of questions. The first one I want you to think about is this one. So for this question, we need to think about what is the TAP. If you're not sure what we mean by the TAP, we have gone through this in a bit more detail in some of the other videos on this channel. But the TAP, is very simply, is the topic, the audience, and the purpose. Now, particularly with functional skills, you'll find that your questions can often be quite long winded. So it is important that you're able to break it down. So we need to think about what specifically do we need to talk about in terms of the topic? Who are we aiming at talking at? So who's the audience? What kind of age group? What nationality? Things like that. What kind of things would affect how we talk to these people? And finally, the purpose. Now, within functional skills, you might be asked to inform, persuade or advise. So you need to look carefully at the question and decide which one you are being asked to do. Another thing to think about is what kind of tone and what kind of mood would you need for this audience? Now, the first thing I would point out here is that at the bottom of this question, it says that you need to write a speech for your school's parents evening 
in which you discuss your point of view. Now, if we are talking to parents, it's very important that we have a certain respectful tone and attitude towards them and that we show a good deal of understanding as well. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, it's going to come off as overly negative and they're not really going to want to listen to what you have to say. Mega challenge. So what do you need to include in a speech? What methods make a speech effective? Now, if you're new to functional skills, it might be a bit confusing about the different forms of writing that you might be faced with. And I know it's something that a lot of people get quite a bit of anxiety about. Don't worry about it. They are very similar in the way that they're structured and the way that they're laid out. But there's a few key areas that we need to go over. And we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in the next part of this video. When it comes to actually planning your writing response, it's important that you think back to the DeForest techniques. Now we've been through this quite a few times in their previous videos, so hopefully you know what each one of these letters stand for. Each of them work towards the DeForest acronym and there's some really important and really key techniques that we need to be using consistently in our writing. Now even though the acronym is quite long, you don't need to use every single um, term within it, but the good thing to think about is which ones will work best in specific questions and specific situations. So for the question that we're looking at at the moment, the first one I'm going to think about is the D. Now, a lot of teachers will say that this is um, a discourse marker, and I'll often refer to it as a discourse marker as well. However, some other teachers will call it direct address. So I'm using this one here, not for the discourse marker, but for direct address. And that is particularly effective when I'm doing a speech, because even though I could be talking to two, 300 people, let's say, in a speech, that direct address saying a word like you or we or us really helps to connect me with my audience and make them feel like I'm talking to them on an individual basis. So for that reason, I definitely use the example there of the direct address. The next one I'll use is a rhetorical question. Now, a rhetorical question is a very effective um, technique to use because it is a question that doesn't actually require an answer. What it does instead is it allows the audience member to think carefully about what you've said and to actually have that kind of internal conversation where they're thinking in depth about the question that you've posed to them. The next one I've used is repetition. Now you may not have went away and looked at many speeches yourself, but I can guarantee there's one speech that the vast majority of people will know. And that is the speech by Martin Luther King, where he says the line, I have a dream. Now, the speech is actually quite long. If you ever go and watch it, it's something I'd advise actually really um, having a look at because it is very beneficial to see the power and the impact that a good speech can have. However, the phrase, I have a dream, is repeated quite a bit, and that is why it is so powerful. It is a specific phrase that is said that actually helps capture the central message he was trying to convey within his speech, and it's the thing that has actually stayed with us most. Even if you haven't watched the speech, most people will know that line, I have a dream, because it's been repeated, it's really important, and it really captures the message that he was trying to convey. The final one that I think is really important to use is a triplet or a group of three. Now, this isn't one that specifically works well just for a speech. It will actually work well for a number of different forms of writing, but the main reason why I want to keep it in there is just because it's a really good technique even if you just think about using three adjectives, then you can use some varied vocabulary there and it can also help you to get a few marks as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the examples. So these are the kind of things that I was thinking based on the writing question we just looked at. So D, this is my direct address. You need to understand the effects of games on young people. And the direct address there, if you're not sure what I mean by direct address, is with the word you. So you can see that there. And it's almost like you've pointing a finger at the person. So again, you might be saying this to a big crowd of people, but the fact that we've used that rhetorical question, or the direct address, I should say, sorry, rhetorical question comes later, makes it seem quite direct, like I'm talking to that person. Ah, so it may be expensive, but who can put a price on happiness? Again, we've got there our technique, which is our rhetorical question. And you've got the rhetorical question, the question mark coming at the end of the sentence there. That is also a really good example because what it does is it actually allows us to have a balanced argument. So it's saying, yes, it is expensive, 
but also it is saying that you know when we're buying games or, or consoles for our children ultimately we do it because we want them to be happy and that's really not a point that anyone can necessarily argue with repetition the reason why i've left out the repetition on this one is simply because it really depends on the stance you're going to have within your writing now it could be something like happiness is key to success or something like that it really depends on the point of view you want to have and the narrative you want to go with if we think about the triplet rather than just using three adjectives i'm also using some phrases as well so you can always change it up so games are pointless violent and has a negative impact on young people and that is really effective as i said before because it helps just to carry home the central message i'm trying to get which is pointless violent and it has a negative impact so three really strong ideas there to suggest that these things are not going to be beneficial for young people last thing i want you to think about is just this teacher's top tip okay so there are many language techniques that may be helpful in your writing so yes we do have the deforest acronym that is very very helpful but there are also other ones that you can include as well when faced with questions consider the outcome so what techniques will help you to achieve the goal what are you really trying to get out of this writing what do you really need to do in order to pass this assessment and make sure it's a good response if you can use all of the techniques in there then that's great that's fine however there might be some that work better for certain questions or certain forms of writing so have a really good think about the kind of techniques that you're using when you're planning your response now what we're going to do is we're going to think back to the question that we looked at a moment ago so here it was so it says games consoles and pcs are expensive and make teenagers lazy aggressive and are less likely to pass exams I wrote a speech for your school's parents evening in which you discuss your point of view so now what we're going to do we're going to have a look at a student response trying to answer this question and if you want to go away and actually write a response for this question yourself then a good idea is to actually use this student response to identify some of the good parts some of the bad parts and maybe you can use that as a starting point for your own writing as well so this is what they've said then good evening ladies and gentlemen games consoles play a big role in the lives of young people these days yes they can be expensive but don't we all need something to help us to rest and relax i know you are old and may not understand because of your age but young people really like gaming these days teenagers can even make money from gaming anyone who thinks they have a bad impact are just really silly really are you really that silly to think games are bad so if you'd like to pause the video here and go through it in your own time then please feel free to do so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the answers on the next part of the video class feedback check your answers against the ones below so on the left hand side then you can see the student response and what we're going to go through now is some feedback that was actually given by a teacher when this was submitted for an assessment now the example we've got here for the student response is just a shortened version of it obviously in your exam the question is normally worth about 21 marks so you would aim to write somewhere between uh, a page or a page and a half for this response so again we've already been through the actual student response let's take a look at the feedback given by the teacher so the first thing it says is the response has been written in the correct form for a speech so again this is something that often um, gets a lot of people worried how to actually lay them out whether you need to use things like headlines and subheadings for certain forms of writing can often be quite confusing so for a speech we don't need to use one however a really important thing to include is to make sure that you're actually doing a greeting remember this is supposed to be almost like a performance something that is intended to be read aloud so we can see there from the very first line it says good evening ladies and gentlemen if you think about the actual purpose of the task as well it's actually used quite a formal way to open the speech as well ladies and gentlemen that is a very respectful and very dignified way to start your writing so it's getting it off to a very good start the candidate has tried to connect with the audience sometimes effectively so that means that the techniques they've used or some of the methods are actually helping to form a connection between the speaker and the audience now this is really important if you want to persuade anyone and you want them to actually be convinced towards what you want to say 
and it's really effective in the first part of this paragraph. So if we look at it now and just think about how this connects with the audience. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So again, nice and respectful. Games consoles play a big role in the lives of young people these days. Yes, they can be expensive, but don't we all need something to help us rest and relax? So this really is quite effective in helping connect with the audience because it's giving us a bit of a balanced argument where it says, yes, they can be expensive. So that's acknowledging probably one of the main issues that parents might have. If you um, know much about gaming, there could be anywhere between 50 to 70 pounds for a single uh, game, let alone the console. And then, but don't we all need something to help us rest and relax? So using words like we is really effective because it's helping us to actually connect with the audience. It's saying it's not me and you as two separate entities. Instead, it's saying we're in this together. This is an issue that I have to deal with as well. So therefore, it's making a, an appropriate connection with the audience straight away. A range of language techniques have been used. So um, using things like rhetorical questions. So we can see that there, I'm gonna now highlight those in a blue color to indicate where they've used some techniques. So I've used a rhetorical question there um, right in the start of it. Um, I know you're old and may not understand because of your age, but young people really like gaming. These days, teenagers can even make money from gaming. Anyone who thinks they have a bad impact are just really silly, really. Are you really that silly to think games are bad? So the first thing, if we're just thinking about the techniques that have been used here, is that the person's used repetition. But think about the word that's being repeated here and what impact that's going to have on the audience. Silly is a really childish word because, again, it's the kind of word we use when we're talking about children or, or toddlers, certainly very young people. So this might be construed as being quite um, aggressive, quite uh, demeaning to the actual people we're talking about. It's also ended it there with a rhetorical question. So if we look back at the rest of the feedback then, some examples of varied punctuation have been used. So we've already highlighted some of the rhetorical questions. They've used a semicolon, which traditionally is quite difficult to use, and that's been used in the second paragraph. So if you're not sure how to use this, this is actually a really interesting example of how to use one. So I know you're old and may not understand because of your age, but young people really like gaming. So you can use a semicolon when you've got two separate clauses that are linked, so two separate ideas that you want to link together. And because the candidate is quite um, quite horribly, actually, very inappropriate the way they're saying this, is saying that because these people are old, they don't understand you know, the importance of gaming to young people. So it's two different ideas. So it's talking about their, their age and the, uh, the passion that young people have for this actual um, hobby they have. And the final one, an inappropriate tone has been used. So let's think about that. The, the first part of the response started really well and really effectively. So if you do want to actually go ahead and use the first paragraph to start your own response, then please do so, because it is really a quite effective response there to begin with. However, the tone in the second paragraph completely ruins it. You can't call people old. That's very offensive. It's not going to get the right effect and it's not going to help you to connect with the audience. Using words like silly, are very demeaning, they're talking down to someone. So you have to think carefully about the kind of tone that you're having. Not only that, silly isn't a particularly effective word either. So we really need to be careful about the kind of words that we're going through. However, this is the student's first attempt. So there's nothing wrong with coming back, revisiting your writing and seeing if you can make a better attempt next time round. So that's why it's really important that we have feedback. And if anyone would like any feedback, please leave us a comment. I can provide you with an email address where you can send over your work and I'll try and get it back to you as soon as possible. I can't stress enough the importance of feedback. So if it's not given to you by myself, it's a good idea to give it to your teacher or whoever it is that's helping you to get through your qualifications as well. When it comes to actually planning your response, it's important that you keep in mind some of these simple teacher's top tips. A lot of people do get stressed out when they're writing a speech. A lot of the time, there's certain forms of writing that you prefer to come up in an assessment. However, as long as you show an awareness of 
how to actually lay out a speech there's different ways to lay it out compared to a letter or an email or something like that then you'll be absolutely fine and then generally most of the rules apply for each of the form of writing is kind of the same first thing i'd say to talk about for a speech would be this so connect with your audience even though this is not something that's going to be actually performed out loud that is still the intended purpose and you need to show an awareness that you understand the audience and what the audience need and what the audience wants so you need to think about the kind of techniques and the kind of methods that you can use to connect with them write using the conventions of a speech now for a lot of um, different forms of writing take for example a letter you'll have to think about the address and um, the sender's details and things like that however for a speech you just need to make sure that first of all that it's written in paragraphs and also that you've used the appropriate greeting and the appropriate ending it might be that your teacher refers to this as salutations salutations is like the greeting or saying hello but it's just important to remember that it is an audience so you're going to have to start off first of all by saying good morning or good afternoon and introducing yourself now this isn't something to stress about too much and it shouldn't take up a lot of your time in your writing but just remember to include it because that is expected when you're writing a speech have an appropriate tone to match the audience so if you think about the question that we've just looked at it's going to be at a parents evening the vast majority of people therefore are going to be adults so in that case you need to make sure that you're speaking in a polite calm and respectful tone which is quite different to the tone that the response had from the student earlier have a clear concise point in each paragraph now i've included this for one of the top tips for writing a speech however it's also something that's really important for any kind of form of writing that you have to do there's no good just trying to get all your ideas into one big chunk because it re looks really horrible it looks like you haven't planned it out or really thought about the structure of your writing use a range of language techniques effectively so earlier on in the video we went through some of the deforest techniques and some of the ones that will work specifically effectively for this form of writing however there are a lot of other techniques you can use as well so really try and consolidate all of your knowledge when you do your writing assessment the final one use spelling grammar and punctuation effectively this is something that's often neglected but it is a real important aspect of english again we're making sure that you can actually communicate and write appropriately um, not just to pass the assessment but also for things that you might do further on in life such as writing out applications or writing your cv again if you've got something like a spelling mistake or a grammatical error then that could actually cost you a job or something like that in the future so it's really important you take a few minutes at the end of your assessment just to read back through and make sure your spelling grammar and punctuation has all been used effectively if you need any additional support or help the new videos will be added onto our youtube channel every single week alternatively please leave us a comment like and subscribe and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible if you'd like some feedback on some work that you've actually completed get in touch and we can provide you with an email address in which we can contact you and mark your work and give you feedback because it is really important that you get that to help develop your own writing if uh, you'd like some more support then you can always check out our partner channel bookworm teaching for more lessons and guidance on all things english Thanks ever so much for listening guys and all the best with studying English in the future.